Hey guys, it's Jason. Welcome to part two of my learning to love the Zeiss 55mm 1.8 series, which is a short one because this is the last episode. And in case you guys missed it, go ahead and click around here for part one. So this is going to be a very exciting episode because it's all about my first boudoir shoot. So this is a lot different from anything I've done before. I've never shot like boudoir models before and I think I kind of like it. And I mean, come on, who doesn't like shooting photos of sexy girls in lingerie? So over the weekend, I went to this meetup group where photographers kind of pay an admission fee to use the studios to shoot models and stuff like that. And that day's particular theme was boudoir. And something I, I should address uh, in this video is that these types of meetup group allows, um, you know, photographers to practice their photography skills, models to like get some photos for their portfolio, um, especially even makeup artists too, like people who do hair, who do makeup, they come here and practice that, that art and craft. So this is a great resource for those who want to practice, who needs practice for the industry. Um, so for photographers, obviously there are flashes and strokes that you can use, but I did not use flash for uh, in this particular case, in this particular scenario, because I didn't really like how the colors were coming out. So I used natural lighting, which came out phenomenal. So I'm really liking some of these shots that I took. Um, these photos, I still need to retouch them a little bit more, but since the purpose of this video is about learning to love the Zeiss 55 millimeter, that's exactly what we're gonna do. So let's go ahead and jump into these photos right now. Let's go with the first one. So again, where the lens really shine, where the 55 really shine is these types of shots, these like uh, half body portraits, the three quarter um, types of shots, um, the upper half body types of shots, you know, this is where the, the lens really shine. So let's go ahead and take a look at this first shot right here. This model's name is Layla. She's an absolute joy to work with. I, you know, um, when I shot with her, I was like, hey, look, I'm still learning how to pose models. I'm still like kind of like a beginner slash intermediate photographer who's looking to get better at posing models and getting better at composition. And she was totally cool with that. Like I asked her, hey, is it all right? Like, you know, after uh, take a, a quick some quick shots you know I come show it to you and you tell me like if it looks awkward or anything like that and she was yeah no problem no you know she was so helpful you know um, she's kind of like kind of guiding me along the way she's like yeah um, you gotta watch out for like the model's hair you know gotta watch out for the good side maybe sometimes the model shouldn't have their mouth a little bit open or you know in this case like not hide their neck like that I mean I kind of like it but you know just some general tips that she was giving me um, so here we are right in front of this flowery backdrop. These are actually legit flowers. This is not like a backdrop. This is, <laughs> I shouldn't have said backdrop. This is a wall of flowers right here, which looks pretty cool. I think I could have made the colors popped a little bit more, but I'm going to be honest. I didn't really like the, the flower, flowery, flowery wall, flowery wall, but it's what I have to work with. Why not? So gorgeous shot right here. Not too bad, loving this photo. There's some skin smoothing I probably have to do for that shot. Okay, so this one, I did use uh, skin smoothing. So here it is, a half body portrait right here. Could have been composed a little bit better, but I like her smile, It's it, 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 she's, she's having a lot of fun. Kind of cut off her elbow right here, which I don't like. There's some veins right here I could have touched up a little bit more. Um, but overall, I like this one because she, simply because she is smiling. Um, Oh yeah, we, we need to be talking about sharpness to the lens. So again, using eye autofocus. So what I notice um, is that I need to shoot at a faster shutter speed for like, if I'm shooting at like 1.8 because even at one 200th of a second, I'm not nailing that focus sometimes. Like there's, a, there's like at least a 30% uh, miss, miss, misfire rate. Not misfire, well, well, well it's it just like, it just wasn't in focus like 30% of the time. So I went to a faster shutter, obviously like one two fiftieth of a second, which 90% um, of the time I'm nailing the focus on the eye. So right here, you guys can see how sharp her eyelash is. Um, this one, uh, yeah, sharp, sharp on the face. Yep, you, get, you really get to see um, a lot of details right here. So let's go ahead and move on, whoop, whoop. Again, lovely later over here, um, kind of touching her shoulder. Like I also asked her like, um, you know, how to pose someone who 
who are not familiar with modeling because uh, the last graduation, the last video I did about the graduation shoot, um, the graduates are kind of like, oh, well, we don't really know how to pose. So I'm kind of like, uh-oh, um, you know, kind of like throwing whatever I learned from like posing videos. I'm just like, well, put your, put your, um, your leg out like this, uh, bend your hip this way, put your hip away from the camera, pop a shoulder down. Like I'm like trying to guide them, but eventually we kind of like ran out of poses. Like all, like all of a sudden they're like kind of doing the same thing over and over again at each location, which I kind of don't like. There should be like a lot of variety going on. I mean, they can do the same pose over and over again, but there should be a bunch of varieties where like you can use a different pose for a different location and not like all the locations with the same pose. You know what I mean? So. Thankfully, I'm working with very experienced models here. Like they know the um, the ideas of pose flowing, posing flow, posing flow. Um, so posing flow is pretty much um, like uh, they start off like at, at like a base pose or something, right? So as the photographer click 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 takes their shots away, you know, like the the, the models would just like kind of like smoothly transition to the next pose. Um, it won't be dramatically different from their base pose. So maybe like an arm up, arm down, look this way, look that way, look at the camera, side to side and all that stuff. And then when it's time to change into a different pose, a different base pose, um, same same thing, you know, it's just like a modified pose of the base pose. So it's pretty cool. Um, just like asking her like uh, how to pose a certain, um, you know, how to pose like, people who are not experienced in modeling, like she offer a lot of great tips. Um, especially like, you know, some girls are kind of worried or even some guys are kind of worried about double chin. She kind of like helped me address that. Like kind of, um, don't stick your neck out too much, but stick it enough where like you kind of don't see the double chin. Um, that's something that I'm gonna need to practice on, but we'll get back to it. I'm kind of rambling on right now. Here's a different model that I had to shoot with. Um, again, um, Again, another lovely model who was providing a lot of great feedback. Her name is Colleen. Um, I will have all these, have all their Instagram links on the on the description box below if you guys want to check out more of their work. So this one, I'm shooting against the window, against the the light. I I kind of didn't expose for it. I kind of like the um, the whiteness coming out from the window. I try not to show too much of the building because some buildings in LA aren't that great. So. Nice blowing out highlights. I know I can clean up a little bit more right here and right here, but I'm um, shooting with Colleen. She's awesome. She's amazing. There's a favorite shot of her that I'm going to show you guys in a little bit, but uh, I shot this with a 35. I didn't use the 35 too much. So I found out for boudoir shooting, 35 millimeter is kind of perfect for like um, using it for, for shooting negative space. Now I didn't learn about negative space until I watched some of Jennifer Rosenbaum video. Now Jennifer Rosenbaum is a professional boudoir shooter. Like she only like done boudoir shooting for four year, four or five years. Um, honestly, she she didn't know anything about photography like five years ago, and now she's built such a strong boudoir photography business. Um, if you're interested, go check her out. She's awesome. She's amazing. Um, she did a series, a collaboration with Sigma, where like she used exclusively Sigma lens on a Nikon body to shoot, and a lot of her pictures came out great. But that's that's not this video is not about her, her, her Sigma, her choice of Sigma uses. It's just like kind of like what I learned from her. Um, so she likes to use a thirty-five millimeter for shooting negative space to kind of capture the nice architecture of the space as well as the model. Um, I don't have the luxury of doing that that day because we're kind of sharing space. So if I shoot like anything outside of this. I'm gonna see the other photographers and the other model. All right, so here again, I am shooting with a 35. Um, a lot of the shots I did with the 35 wasn't exactly my favorite, so we'll just kind of blaze through it a little bit faster. All right, so here I am shooting with 35. I kind of like this. Maybe this could be considered negative space. I don't know, but I kind of like her like pulling the curtain, really like accentuating a lot of her curves right here, kind of looking down, looking away from the camera, very like, mysterious um, and you get to see a lot of that like these models they know how to use props they know how to utilize props fully so here she is playing with the curtain again another seductive mystery sexy pose right here kind of looking half looking through the curtain half looking through um, not looking through anything I guess uh, one of my favorite shots right here definitely now here is my favorite shot from that day like um, this might not be composed the best or she's not showing off like the best 
Uh, but I, uh, what, what I really liked about this shot was her eyes. It's not completely in focus. There's a little bit. It's just I didn't nail the focus right there, but it still looked amazing from far away. I kind of gave her some retouching on the eyes, but wow, like this is my favorite shot. It's just so beautiful, so gorgeous. It really shows her good side. Um, the nice window lighting, the curtain. It's just wow. Loving this shot. This is my favorite shot. Like this is a shot that I posted on my Instagram right away the night of. Like I was so excited to work on this. Really nice, very beautiful, really shows how much I love the 55mm 1.8. It's just, it's, just, it's just great capturing this kind of detail. Uh, this one was the unedited version. Well, kind of edited, but not too much retouching. All right, so moving on back to the flowery wall, which I kind of didn't want to use, but I had to because we had to switch space with the other photographers. Um, I ideally want, I originally wanted to use this chair against this nice, um, uh, wall on the other side, but I didn't get to but I still wanted to use a chair anyway. I kind of want to use some props. So um, Again, Kate Colleen was um, Really helpful. She was like, okay, I can do something with the chair um, She kind of like kind of informed me that it's not good to take like an open crotch shot um, Sometimes models models would have to probably cover their crotch with their arms and stuff like that. So um, Great shot. This one really shows off her legs. I kind of like that you know, kind of shows off her legs and more really like this shot as well. Move on, on to the mirror shots. So the mirror shots are some of uh, Colleen's favorite shots. Uh, personally for me, um, my 55 was kind of too close. Like when I was taking this photo, I was kind of like already against the wall and I couldn't really capture too much of it. I was trying to capture her and, you know, kind of blur her out, but her mirror image in focus, um, which I had a, I had a, a pretty difficult time doing because the camera wasn't wasn't focusing too much on the mirror it was focusing on her so I had to like center focus on her face and then recompose um, but I kind of wish I got more of the mirror and you'll see that in the next few photos like I try getting more of the mirror trying to get more of her in and at, at the same time focus on her the thing is I have to it's tricky too because there's like a lot of things going on in the background like right here I don't know why I'm pointing at my screen right here. I should be pointing it in the monitor, but um Yeah, you can see like this uh this little um Extension cord like running in the background, which you know, I should probably crop out more um, But yeah, it was just like a pretty difficult space to work with But we really like how the flower background is working in this mirror like I didn't like how the whole flowery wall just took up the entire shot like for something like this to like frame it into the mirror I really like it a lot so she's trying to be sexy with her with whatever she is wearing and her little leather jacket like I I like this shot too I like it a lot I kind of wish I got more of her body in kind of wish I also didn't get this cut off here I got it in the shot another not a great shot right here I think this is ideally what I was going for more I kind of want kind of wish I had more of the bottom right here to work with though but yeah this is good I like it back to the amazing Layla she was again so helpful like I walked up to her and I was like look I kind of got a lot of window shots already I kind of want to utilize the wall but I kind of don't know like what do what do models and photographers usually do with the walls and she was like yeah no problem so usually photographers kind of take it on the side and then this is where I really accentuate my curve and like really give that s curve look and all of that stuff and I was like cool let's go for it let's do it so she was she was super helpful she was like kind of like telling me you know what what people would usually do with certain props um, here she is right here kind of extending her arm out very sexy um, the thing was uh, she was saying how um, this arm was kind of covering her face. Um, I think maybe it, that was from a different shot, but she was like, try to like show more of the face of the model instead. And I was like, is it okay to cut off the arms on top right here? And she was like, yeah, it's fine. It looks great. It's still a good photo. So this is my favorite shot of Layla. Like she's just like striking that sexy pose, opening up that, that, that little windows, um, not windows. So opening up those curtains, kind of looking out the window. Ugh, it's just, it's just, Gorgeous. I kind of wish she was wearing something else though. I wasn't too digging the swimsuit that she was wearing um, But it still looks sexy. It still looked great But I still wish she was wearing lingerie for this for this particular shot um, What I did in this photo was um, Made the highlights tinted like earlier um, you saw with um, Colleen 
I just kind of, I didn't touch, I didn't really touch the split toning. I didn't really make the highlights blue. And I'm trying to like kind of make this into my style where like kind of add like a little bluish tone, bluish tint to my photos. So I really like how this one's coming out. This one looks like it's like a little morning, morning shot where she's just, just waking up, looking out in the beautiful landscape of LA. So dig it. How sharp's that focus? Damn sharp, damn sharp right there. Amazing. Actually, we didn't take a look at some of these shots of her eyes. Not, it's it's kind of in focus, not too bad, as, as sharp as it could be. What about this one? Mm, oh, this eye is sharp right here. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it for my first boudoir shoot. And let me be honest with you guys, like I've been to a few meetup groups before, but nothing like this, especially a boudoir shoot. Like I was pretty nervous as heck, um, but I highly encourage you guys to go. Like if you guys want to practice photography, there's a new lens that you got or like like me, I, I ordered a flashpoint strobe. Like I'm going to need to practice that a lot and I can see myself bring um, that light here and just testing it out because if you are a starting photographer like I am uh, trying to build your portfolio and you have nothing to show for but there's like a model that you want to shoot, like go to these events and really build your connection, build your network and have some stuff for your portfolio because this is something that you want to be showing. Having something to show off to the model you want to work with, it's going to help you book that gig even like the chances of booking that gig higher. So I encourage you guys um, to definitely look up some meeting groups in your local area and um, go for it. Like really get some photos for your portfolio. I highly recommend it. And um, yeah, I guess that's it. So let me move on to some quick weekly Wednesday updates. So I'm super happy that a lot of you guys are leaving comments on my videos, just like saying, hey, great video, good job. You know, I was just like, wow, I, I couldn't believe like videos like this are doing so well, you know, definitely helping a lot of you guys out there. So I'm happy to make them, super happy to be, be making this video right now. Um, but also I'm hearing you guys, a lot of you guys want to see more videos of the Sony G Master 24 to 70. And I want to do that for you guys, just because you guys are asking for it. Let me tell you a quick funny story though. So yesterday I was at an art gallery, like a private art gallery. So I can't really show you guys photos of it. But um, um, I was shooting like a, a, a short message video from the artist um, and he has, a, he has some Japanese handlers. So his Japanese photographer was also sh shooting with a Sony A7. I'm not sure A7 what, but probably just A7. So he saw me whipped out the 24 to 70 G Master. And let me tell you, I was shooting video, so I was using this run gun lens right here. So I bust out the G Master lens and he was like, oh, Master G. And I was like, yeah, oh yeah, it is. So she was, uh, he was telling my translator and she was telling me back like, oh yeah, he's saying how this is like the best lens ever, like the sharpest lens from Sony, like how he wished he had it. And I was like, yeah, this lens is freaking expensive, but it's awesome. And I offered to him, I was like, do you want to try it? Do you want to try it later with your camera? And I was like, oh no, no, no. But uh, yeah, um, I'm so glad to be sharing that moment with a like, fellow Sony photographer. So anyways, back to what I was saying. So I'm definitely hearing you guys. You guys want to see more photos coming out from the 24 to 70. And I'll try to do more of that. This weekend, I'll be going to San Diego for my friend's wedding. I'll be attending the wedding rather than shooting the wedding. Um, so I'm going to be taking the 24 to 70 out. I'm leaving the 55 and the 35 millimeter home. Gosh, I just hate saying how I'm not taking the 35. I really want to shoot with the 35. Really want to give it a purpose. But just for you guys, I'll take the 24 to 70 out to my San Diego trip and hopefully get some good shots, good enough shots for me to make a video out of. So be patient with me. I'm definitely going to get some shots with the 24 to 70. Um, aside from that, these next couple of weeks, I'll be pretty busy um, in a sense where I'll be busy with more videos than photos. I kind of want to do more photography, but this summer is going to be crazy. Like I have a lot of uh, video gigs going on. So next, like this weekend, going to San Diego next weekend, we're going to go to San Francisco. My buddy, Eric, got an, uh, my buddy, Eric and I will be going to San Francisco to shoot a wedding. We're going to be shooting with the a sevens. Um, he's going to be shooting with a seven S two. I'm going to be shooting with the a seven R two. We're going to be capturing the highlights with these cameras and using GH four to capture the long form stuff like ceremonies and whatnot. So, I've used this 
I used the a7R2 to shoot videos for the past couple of weeks now, and I'm gonna say I'm, f I'm fairly confident to be using this camera to be shooting a wedding. Um, and I think a lot of you guys were kind of asking about how well the a7R2 videos, like how well it works as a video camera and how well the G Master 24 to 70 works for video. So I, I definitely have some stuff to say about it for both video and photos, but I'm going to wait until I take it out to a wedding first before giving you guys a review or some more thoughts with these lenses and stuff like that. So be patient with me. Um, in the next couple of weeks, I'll be using this setup and um, by then I'll have more to say about the camera and the lens. Um, anyways, guys, as always, I appreciate you guys watching all the way through. Um, if you have any questions for me, go ahead and leave in the comments down below and I'll try to get back to you as quickly as possible. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.